The following program is a paid presentation. Wake up to the Word. Share an uplifting hour with grace and glory and Baltimore's faithful. Well, good morning, and indeed it is a great getting up morning because we celebrate a risen sage, Savior on this Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday morning. Reverend Lee Michaels here with you to start your day. And joining us is Bishop Lisa Weir, who is, of course, a dear friend. And uh, we've shared the platform together. It's so good to see you again. Good to see you. So good to be here on my favorite Sunday of the year. Oh, bless your heart, mine too. And we've got a lot to talk about. So yes. glad to have you here with us, okay? Thank you. All right, we're going to make our way to our first spoken word, then come back with our lovely guest. But first, Bishop Dante Hickman is standing by over at Southern Baptist Church on this Resurrection Sunday morning here on Grace and Glory. Welcome to the television broadcast ministry of Southern Baptist Church. And now a word from our pastor, Dr. Dante L. Hickman, Sr. Praise the Lord, saints and friends. I'm Bishop Dante Hickman, pastor of the Southern Baptist Church. And it is my delight to greet you on this Lord's Day. I thank and praise God for all of you, our viewers, who have been worshiping with us via this broadcast ministry for almost the last 20 years. Can you believe it? Almost 20 years has passed and we have continued to be the number one rated gospel television uh, show on in the state of Maryland. That's phenomenal for Grace and Glory and for Southern Baptist Church to be a part of that. We thank and praise God for you and every day I'm always out and about in the market and I see people, pastor, I watch you every Sunday on my way to church. Thank God for that word. I'm in the gym working out. Pastor, you did it again. Shut it down, Dante. And it's always encouraging to my heart. Well, I want to ask you if you would consider giving, sharing, an offering, a contribution uh, on a weekly or a monthly basis that we might continue to stay on the air, continuing to preach and teach the word of God, even to people who may never join our church or never be able to come to church, but they can be blessed through this particular um, medium and ministry. You can send your gifts to 1701 North Chester Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21213 or you can share that gift uh, via our website through the Givelify app, or even text to give, all of which appear on your screen. I thank God for the opportunity to share the word of God in this way with you. And it is my prayer that you and your family are continually blessed as we embrace God's extraordinary this year. God bless you real, real good. By the time of our text, Jesus was preparing for his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. This would be his last ride, as this event was the beginning of the end of his earthly life towards the cross of Calvary. So one might ask, what made this a triumphant entry any more than the day he was crucified a Good Friday? And the answer, is in the fact that the prophetic word of God was actually coming to pass. Despite what the enemy tried to do, it did not stop the plan of God from coming to pass. So then, it was not so much what was negative that was taking place, but about the positive outcomes that would prevail. What a blessing it would be if you and I would learn how to live our lives beyond the negative experiences of life toward the positive outcomes. Because as a child of God, everything you go through is working on your behalf. This is why the Bible says that no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper. And the sufferings of this present time are not even worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. And all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord 
and are the call according to his purpose. You may not feel it, you may not like it, but God is working it out for you. The relationship, the job, the house, the car, the project, the business, the degree, or anything else you are working on, if it does or doesn't work out the way in which you expect, God is still working on your behalf. Lean over and tell somebody he's working it out for you. Go ahead. <laughs> but beyond the thing that he is working out for you, he is working on you. Everything you go through is really about you. The ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, the pass and the fail, is really about what God is doing in you. This is why Jesus waits until this very moment when they are at the closest point to entering into Jerusalem to send two of his disciples to get what was needed. Talk about the last minute and cutting it close and pushing things to the edge. It seems like they should have had this donkey already. What if something would have gone wrong? What if the person that was supposed to loose the donkey got stubborn and didn't do it? What if they were not able to retrieve the donkey in time? But what this text is tailored to teach us is that when God has something for you, nobody can take it from you. God wants all of us to know it belongs to you and it will be there for you when you get there for it. What intrigues me the most about this text is that Jesus wasn't worried about anything. The same way he slept through a storm while he was on a ship, the same way he walked on top of the water in the middle of the storm, the same way he was not anxious that he would get everything he needed to fulfill the plan of God for his life. He demonstrated complete control and peace in knowing he would have everything he needed when he needed it. And I'm preaching this sermon because sometimes you and I have severe difficulty with emulating Jesus in this manner because we want what we want when we want it. He told us be anxious for nothing. He told us not to take any thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. If I can feed the sparrow in the air, if I can clothe the grass of the field, how much more will I take care of my little children? But you and I keep pulling our hair out. We keep stressing ourselves and everybody else out because we want what we want and we want it right now. And if you're like me, and you'll be honest, you will pull out all stops to get what it is that you want. And if we're not careful, we can sometimes take ourselves through unnecessary depression, disappointment, and disillusionment. If we would just wait on God and allow God to work it out. But God sent me with a word today to help us to live in faith and in expectation of what he has for us and not just what we want for ourselves. Oh, this is gonna get harder because sometimes our ambition may not be God's vision for our lives. Sometimes that's what you want and it's not what God wants. That's why the people who said Hosanna in this text, meaning save us now, were looking for a militaristic hero to come and overthrow the Roman Empire. But he didn't come to give them what they wanted. He had already been down that road before when he overthrew the Egyptian Empire and brought them out of Egypt when he overthrew the Persian Empire, when he overthrew the Chaldeans, when he overthrew the Babylonians, and yet 
they kept on turning their backs on him. And what God said is what you need is not another physical manifestation, but what you need is a spiritual transformation. Doesn't matter how many houses I build for you, doesn't matter how many cars I get for you, doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank, doesn't matter what your title is and what you possess in this world, unless you are changed from the inside out, you ain't gonna never have real joy. <laughs> Jesus didn't come to give them what they wanted. Instead, he came to give them something so much better. And I need you to tell your neighbor, that's what he's about to give you. Go ahead. He's about to give you so much better. And all you need to do is get a mindset to expect to find what you need. And that's what Jesus does with these disciples in this text when he tells them to go into the village and find this specific donkey for a specific kingdom purpose. He told them where to find it, how to find it, and what to say if anybody asked them why they needed it. And it all worked out exactly as Jesus said it would. And can I tell you, church, that God has given us a specific assignment, a specific appointment, accomplishment and attainment for our lives that we can anticipate apprehending you're going to get what God has for you I don't care how broke you feel right now I don't care how sick you are right now I don't care how lonely you are right now I don't care if you can't see your blessing on the horizon I need you to shout it to yourself I'm going to get what God has for me And, and, and I can't wait until I get it to give him praise. I can't wait until I get it to give him thanks. I can't wait until I get to where I'm going before I praise God for it. I've got to thank him for who he is, for where I am right now, and to know that everything he has for me is going to be there for me. Going to get it when I am determined yeah. to be conscientious of the word of God. That's point number one. I'm almost done. Verse four and five says, All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. And he's not coming. Like you would expect a king to come, he's coming lowly, sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now, church, it's important to note that this episode was not accidental. It was not coincidental, but it was divinely providential. According to the scripture, this was all a setup. Oh, my God. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you've been set up. You, you don't even see it yet. You don't even know what God is up to. He allowed people to stab you in your back. He allowed people to lie on you and talk about you. He allowed you to lose that job. He allowed you to get evicted from that house. He allowed your health to fail. But if you are still alive, you have not arrived to what God has for you. You need to know that whatever you're going through, it's a setup. All of us need to know that our steps and our stops have been ordered by the Lord. God is always up to something. He's always setting you up for a blessing. This is why it's critically important, church, that we study the word of God for ourselves. Don't just wait till Sunday morning. Don't just wait till Wednesday night. Just don't wait till Saturday morning. But every time you get a chance, you ought to pick up your Bible and just read some scripture. 
That's why it's important that we fast and pray and we strive at the spirit after the spirit of God so that we can see God at work and follow where God is leading us. That's why the shepherd said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul and yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I still ain't going to fear no evil because the Lord is with me. Some of y'all can't go through the valley of the shadow of death because you can't feel his presence with you. He said, I'll be a very present help in the time of trouble. But you keep trying to avoid trouble. Ain't no sense of you trying to avoid trouble. Jesus said, in this life, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. For I've already overcome the world. You and I have to read his word. We've got to fast and pray. We've got to strive after the spirit of God and follow where he leads us. Because without God's guidance, we will be tossed with the wind in every direction. But when you know his word for your life, you'll know what to look for in your life. Too many of us are looking for love in all the wrong places. Too many of us are going by our own whimsical nature. We're trying to trust our mother wit. We're going according to our feelings. But how can you know the temperature if you don't have a spiritual barometer? And how can you set the temperature if you don't have a spiritual thermostat? You are too powerful to be living your life without guidance from God. When you know his word for your life, you know who to look for in your life. And God is so good, help me preach this, that he will tell you which jackass to pick. And which jackass to leave alone? He'll guide you on who to date. Look at somebody tell him, he'll guide you. On who to mate. He'll guide you on who to elevate. And my God, he'll guide you on who to eliminate. And right now, some of y'all have elevated people in your life that should have been eliminated a long time ago. But the question is, who are you listening to? Who's guiding you? How do you know if you're in the will of God or not? The proverbial writer said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own brains. Oh my God, look at your neighbor, tell him, I know you got big brains. But he said, lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Maybe you don't acknowledge him because you don't want his direction. Maybe there's some stuff you want that he doesn't want for you. And when you study his word, you will discover that everything he has for you is waiting on you. Amen. Stop stressing out. Stop going crazy. Stop losing your mind. It may not come when you want it, but when you'll want it when it comes. Have I got a witness here? Amen. He says you can anticipate and expect to find everything you need. When you're conscientious of the word of God, but then secondly, when you're confident in the word of God. Because knowing the word and doing the word are two different things. Yeah. Matthew 21 verse 6 says, so the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded. What Jesus asked them to do, church, was questionable, but nobody questioned him about it. Can you imagine Jesus telling you, 
go over there uh, to Rolling Pop, and there you'll find a Mercedes Benz. Get inside of it, and then and drive it off. And if the owner says, where are you taking my Benz? The Lord has need of it. <laughs> not, not, we're borrowing it and we're going to bring it back. The Lord has need of it. And, and, and then, they, then they say, go ahead. Do you need any gas? But see, some of y'all, y'all just going to obey God straight up like that. Here it is, my dear brothers and sisters. Nobody questioned Jesus. They just moved in obedience to his command. Let me ask you a question. How long does it take you to do what the Lord tells you to do? Some of y'all still ain't done what he told you to do 10 years ago. Or does everything have to make sense before you submit to his will? And what you don't realize, church, is that your disobedience causes delays. You, you around here trying to figure out why is it taking so long for me to get to the next level? Why is it taking so long for me to get married? Why is it taking so long for me to get this, that, or the other? Have you checked the last time you have been obedient to the word of God in your life? And it's one thing, my dear brothers and sisters, when your disobedience delays your destiny. But you need to realize when you are holding us all up from getting where God wants us to be. I'm being obedient, but you being disobedient in the same house. Here it is. You're wondering why your blessing can't come through because somebody else in the house ain't doing what they're supposed to do. When God told Jonah to go and preach to the Ninevites, Jonah decided he was going to go in the opposite direction. He made up his mind, I'm not going to preach to the Ninevites because I don't like them. And I wonder if I got any Christians here that'll be honest, that can testify there's some people I don't want to bless because I don't like them. Oh, y'all ain't going to be honest. God told you to bless them anyhow. And you say, God, uh-uh, not that person. What they did to me, what they said about me, and God is trying to tell you the only way you're going to be blessed is if you unlock and bless somebody else that you know tried to kill you. Preach, Dante. Bible says he went in the opposite direction. And you know what the Bible says? He then got on the ship, headed to this place called Tarshish that ended up in a storm that was threatening to sink the ship. And the soldiers who were on board the ship tried to figure out why is our ship sinking? And then they realized that it was sinking because Jonah was on board being disobedient to the word and the will of God. And you know what they did to Jonah? They threw him overboard. And God sent me by here to tell somebody that you and I cannot afford to allow the disobedience of somebody else to delay, detour, and deny our destiny. Sometimes you got to make up in your mind that some people have to be thrown overboard and out of our lives. What Jesus demonstrated in this text is that he will not only give us direction, but he'll also give us protection so that we can do what he's called us to do with confidence. Somebody shout confidence. Because in this next season of your life, God wants you to go after what he has for you with 
boldness and with confidence. You cannot allow your past. You cannot allow your perplexities. You cannot allow other people's perspectives of you to stop you from being and doing the you that God has predestined and positioned you to be. You got to live like you know this is the will of God through Jesus Christ concerning you. You got to lift up your head. You got to hold out your chest. You got to stand on the word of God and say to yourself, God wants me to be strong. God wants me to be successful. God wants me to be satisfied. God wants me to be courageous. God wants me to be encouraged. God wants me to have joy. Don't you sit there and act like you're not supposed to be blessed. Don't you look down on yourself just because you made some mistakes in your life. You better hold up your head and say, if God forgave me, then I'm going to forgive myself and I'm going to get everything that God has for me. I need every confident child of God to shout, I don't have the spirit of fear. God did not give me the spirit of fear, but he gave me a spirit of power. He gave me a spirit of love. He gave me a spirit of a sound mind. And I have made up in my mind that some people don't want me to have it, but my blessing is not up to some people. God told me I'm the head and not the tail. He told me I'm the lender and not the borrower. He told me I'm above and I'm not beneath. So who am I to shrink beneath the dignity and the destiny of God? If you are a child of God, you got to walk in the enemy's face and you got to say the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked, even my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh? They ain't going to do nothing but stumble and fall. And though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Because one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I dare you to tell somebody, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Well, that's my time. Good morning, church. May the Lord bless all of y'all real, real good. But I dare you to high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you do, expect to find everything you need when you're conscientious of the word of God when you know his word over your life you know what to look for in your life then, then the Bible says if you're going to get what you need you got to be confident in the word of God I may not have the education I may not have the affiliation I may not have the transportation but I got God in my life and if God be for me he's more than everybody that stands against me can I preach like a fillet the Bible says you can expect to find everything that you need when you are committed to the word of God somebody shall commit it you got to know it you got to do it and then you got to be committed to the word of God I need 20 people to shout I'm all in I don't say it if you don't mean it but if God's been good to you if you trust him with everything you got then you ought to shout I'm all in that's what verse 7 says the Bible says that they brought the donkey and they brought the colt that that ain't all they did they laid their clothes on them and they set Jesus on them did y'all see that church they didn't just do enough but they did more than enough they demonstrated that they were all in when they put their clothes on the donkey to give Jesus a saddle to give Jesus a comfortable ride they took the best of what they had 
and they didn't put it on a stallion. They put it on a donkey that would carry Jesus because their value was not in what was carrying more than who it was carrying. Somebody help me preach and shout my value is not in what I'm carrying. My value is in who is carrying me. Have I got a witness? You've been watching the television broadcast of Southern Baptist Church, where Dr. Dante L. Hickman Sr. is the pastor. Welcome back. Thank you, uh, Bishop Hickman, for our first spoken word on this Resurrection Sunday. And Bishop Lisa Weir is with us. Uh, so what a beautiful smile. You've all, I've always remembered you for that smile. you got a wonderful smile. Well, thank you so much. The joy of the Lord is our <laughs> strength. <laughs> yes, indeed, even even more so on this Resurrection Sunday. What yes. does this day mean to you? This is my favorite Sunday because this is the day that Christianity was born. And, you know, we know that the first Christian title wasn't birthed until Acts, sure. but this is where our faith was born. That's right. Uh, it was wonderful that he came, wonderful that he died, but he had to get up. He had to get and up. And I'm so glad that tomb is still empty. Hallelujah. Yes, yes sir. Indeed. This is what our faith is all about. Yeah. And, and, and the resurrected Savior is a victorious Savior, which yes. lets us know that in him, victory is inherently ours. This is our hope. This is our power, and this is how we can walk through this life knowing that nothing can defeat us because he has already overcome the world. Now let me twist it a little bit and ask you this. For someone who may not have an acumen for the church, yes. someone who has not had enough exposure with the scriptures, yes. someone who's not saved, mm -hmm. how do you get across the relevance of this day to them? The relevance of this day is as pointed as it was 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. We all have sinned. We've all fallen short mm -hmm. of God's glory. Jesus is the way back to God. And at some point in all of our lives, we realize we need God more than we need the air we breathe. Wow, yes indeed. I'll tell you something else we need, his love. And that's what comes to mind for me, yes. that God so loved the world yes. that he gave the very best that he had for us to help us to be able to bring out our best. And that's what love really is. Yes, yes indeed. Mm -hmm. So listen, I'd love for you to tell us what's been happening with you over at uh, Bethlehem. Yes, New Bethlehem Baptist Church. That is my heart and my home. We went through a devastating fire um, right, back in right. 2016. I remember that. Uh, we moved back into our building in 2019. We gutted the entire building, uh -huh. and it is a fully renovated, refurbished facility. That's awesome. Um, we're still doing little things to continue to finish what we started. Sure. Uh, then, of course, we had the same interruption of momentum like all other churches during cool. the pandemic. How did that impact you? Oh, wow. You know, it was twofold. Uh, because I actually appreciated uh, some downtime to not have to get up and run around. Lord have mercy. And, and, yeah. and that was kind of refreshing, but yeah. at the same time, it was so challenging to yeah. keep ministry going and flowing and figure out how to reach people beyond the walls. And so now that we're back, mm -hmm. we are reestablishing the momentum. You know, I noticed as I travel around the country uh, preaching and ministering, um, how people still are more excited about getting up for the f football games than about <laughs> getting up to come to church. You think? Yes, but I still believe when Jesus said, if I be lifted up, yeah. I will draw them all. And, and, and I think that's the most important thing that we should dwell on and focus on. You know, Jesus, uh, he went where the people were. And if, in fact, some folk are going to gravitate to social media platforms, mm -hmm. then we need to be there. Yes, we need to be everywhere. And I think this was a wake up call uh, yeah. for the church uh, that was locked within walls, yeah. not doing a lot of outreach, yeah. evangelism, yeah. missions work uh, in the past few years. What I've, has happened to evangelism? Yeah. I don't hear or see. I have seen a rebirth of it and God forced it 
through the adversity of the pandemic. Now, New Bethlehem has always been extremely community centered because you know we're in Sandtown, right? And so that is a you mission were in the field. Of the whole oh Freddie yes, Gray thing. that that's a mission field within itself. Yeah. And Freddie Gray's death just brought to light the plight of the people in that within area. that area. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. So you know, speaking of uh, plight, uh, you had a personal plight for your family, a loss. Yes. Devastating loss. And first and foremost, I extend our condolences. Thank you so and much. And I pray that God continue to keep you lifted. Thank you. you know, Only by his strength. Oh my goodness. So my baby girl, 24, Kayla, um, passed in her sleep last March. Wow. So just went through one year anniversary. And, you know, God has really shown me over this past year just how big he is. Mm -hmm. I don't know how persons who don't have faith in the Lord navigate grief. a loss like that because yeah. grief is hard anyway, but losing a child, as you know, yes. it's an unusual grief. It's a club that we don't want anybody else to ever have to be in. One of the things, you know, with the loss of a son, um, one of the things that I came to realize that in the natural order of things, our children are supposed to put us away, not the other way around. And so when around. it happens the other way, it really puts us in a place that's very uncomfortable and awkward yes. because that's we're not supposed to say goodbye to our children. Exactly. They're supposed to say goodbye to us. But out of that, there was birth of uh, an, another uh, Ministry, mission. Ministry, yes. Uh, Baloma actually means out of the natural order. Wow. And it's the terms, ancient Sanskrit term, used to describe the bereaved mother, the, the bereaved parent. And so the Baloma gathering is going to be the launch. And, you know, I didn't see it all when I, when God first showed me to do it. And this I didn't want to do it. This is what you're birthing. Now you're yes. giving birth to it. Yes, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to be in this club, but here we are. Yeah. And so you have to really think about, you know, what is next? Where do we go now? What do we do? And, and how can God birth new because when a seed falls to the ground, yeah. then something must grow. Yes. And so Veloma, we're going to launch on the first week, last weekend in April. Okay. The 26th, 27th, 28th is Sunday. We'll get up and pray and go to church. Um, but <laughs> Friday night, all day Saturday, I've invited bereaved moms from all over the country, um, wherever, to just come and join us at the Meriwether Lakefront Hotel for Friday night, all day Saturday, it is going to be an incredible time uh, of just sharing with one another, learning, and, and fellowship. Well, listen, we're going to come back. Something came to mind, and I'll share it with you when we come back, okay? Right, right now, we're going to make our way to our next spoken word on this Resurrection Sunday. Pastor Jason Clark over at the Omega Baptist Church. Stay tuned. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Jason Clark of Omega Baptist Church of Ministries, and I want to personally invite you to join us in person at one of our worship services. You can join us in Owings Mills at 10 a.m. at the American Legion Hall, 4424 Painters Mill Road in Owings Mills, Maryland. And once again, that's 10 a.m. Or meet us in Baltimore City at our Omega City Outreach Center, 5503 Richard Avenue at 1230 p.m. There are two times every Sunday. I would love to see your face in the place and increase your faith and favor with God. Pastor Jason Clark, Omega Baptist Church Ministry. Hope to see you soon. God bless. I'm going to be how our relationship is with God. Because I don't care what church says. I don't care what my church says. I, I don't care what anybody on the internet says. Because my relationship with God is so strong. That even if they say something's wrong. I'm going to turn back to the right. Because of how good God has been in my life. Somebody ought to say. I'm not worried about popular people's opinion. Because I know an all powerful God. Y'all missed it. I'm going to say again. I'm not worried about popular people's opinion because I serve an all-powerful God. Amen. Kings and kingdoms, what victory will all pass away? But there's something about the name Jesus. These encounters played significant role in Jacob's life and shaped the course of his journey with God. 
And Sister Monique, how we've encountered God will shape the course of our journey into our destiny. How we have experienced God is more than a just a church. It's more than a just church. God, y'all don't like that. It, it's more than just a church experience. That, that's why people blow my mind getting all their, 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 their feathers all ruffled and, and messed up because of what people say about the church. Amen. The devil, what you say about the church. I know God in the church, and I know God outside of the church. I know God before church starts, and I know God after church ends. And so this hour once a week or two hours once a week does not define the confines of my relationship with God. Somebody ought to say amen. That'd be like saying I only know my wife when we go out to date night. No, we got a different type of relationship. It ain't just what you see in public. Come on now, we got a private connection. And that ought to be how all of us deal with our God. It ain't just something we do on Sundays for public display. No, it's something we do at home for our own benefit. Knowing God is a pleasure and a privilege. The Bible goes on to say, watch this now, in Jacob's journey, he had to deal with a whole lot of stuff that we are often familiar with. I told you this morning, he came from a dysfunctional family. I mean, he came from a dysfunctional family. I mean, his mama and him conspired against the daddy for the blessing. Uh, amen. He came from a dysfunctional family. His father was trying to give a, a blessing he had bartered with his brother to his brother. He came from a dysfunctional family. And so don't you feel bad uh, on this morning if your family is a little dysfunctional. Y'all ain't gonna talk in here. All of us got some dysfunctions in our family. All of us got some people, amen, that we wish treated us a little better, had a little bit more heart and kindness toward us. All of us got something, amen, on our journey is some dysfunction. But not only did he have a, a, a dysfunctional family, he had a malfunctioning marriage. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here. The woman he wanted, he didn't get. Amen. He had to, to go with the weak-eyed one for seven years and then uh, got the one he wanted and found out he should have stayed uh, with the weak-eyed one. Amen. Would have been better off. Now, many of us have done that ourselves. Be careful about jumping ships in relationships. Uh, Y'all ain't going to talk to me in here. I believe his malfunctioning marriage and his dysfunctioning family was more than enough, but that wasn't it. Amen. He had what I would call a hazardous amen hazardous occupation because he worked for a brother that wanted to change his wages all the time he promised him one thing and give him something else anybody ever had a amen one of them type of jobs where you thought you were secure and found out it was shaky thought amen everything was wonderful uh, and found out they let you go before the snow is there anybody in here that would talk to me and say i know what it's like to have a, a dysfunctional family I know what it's like to have a, a malfunctioning marriage or relationship, but I also know what it's like to have a hazardous workplace environment. This was all part of Jacob's journey. Yeah. Now on Jacob's journey to Bethel, I want to share with you in Genesis, the 35th chapter, verses 1 through 15. I'm, I'm going to pick up right around verse 8. Some things happen on the journey. In verses 1 through 7, we learn how to hold on when it seems like we feel like letting go. But I want you to know this, that in the verse 8, something dark happens in the life of Jacob. Rebecca's nurse, Deborah, died and was buried under an oak tree outside of, of Bethel. So Jacob called it the city, the tree of crying. You're going to have some tears. Y'all may not want to hear it. I wish you wouldn't have come to church. But I'm going to tell you today, you're going to cry sometime. I wish you had stayed home. I wish you hadn't made your way here. It would have been better for you to stay in bed and watch online. But if you're here, I'm going to tell you, you're going to cry over some things. You're going to cry over children that don't talk to you. You're going to cry over family that forsakes you. You're going to cry because every now and then you're going to want things to work out one way and they're going to work out another. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, people that are you used to helping you are going to die. I'm going to tell you, they're going to die. Yes. If we live on this earth long enough, we're going to lose some people we love. Yes. If we live on this earth long enough, some people that we were used to helping us are going to be in heaven one day while we're still here stuck on this earthly tabernacle. 
Rebecca, the nurse, the person that nurtured Rebecca died. The person that nurtured her died and was buried under an oak tree outside. And so Jacob called the, 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 the tree the tree of crying. Why? Because sometimes when people you trust in uh, that nurture and nourish you gone, uh, tears fill your eyes. Sad, sad place in life if you've never cried over losing somebody. Because when you lose somebody you love, tears are necessary. Tears are, amen, appropriate. The Bible goes on to say, Rebecca the nurse died, then God appeared once more to Jacob after he came back from Padan Maram and he blessed him. I want to share with you that sometimes our greatest breakthroughs come after our greatest breakdowns. Ain't nobody want this in here. Don't forget this is for me, Victor. So sometimes after you've fallen apart, it's when God takes everything and puts it back together. It's not until I gave it up that God actually blessed me. I let it go and God actually stepped in and made everything. But it's not until you've had some of your greatest breakdowns that God has given you your greatest breakthroughs. I thank you, Lord, that I'm somebody that has broken down and cried. Yeah. Cried because of the life, amen, that I, amen, have lived. Cried because I fell and failed, my God. Cried because of the conviction of sin, amen, was so great. Do I have anybody under the sound of my voice that can testify? I'm so glad that God in my breakdowns helped me to get to my breakthroughs. God appeared once more to Jacob after he came back from Padanaram and, and he blessed him. He blessed him because he had just gone through what many of us need to do is a good cry. Good man. Just let it all out. Yeah. So sometimes when it does victory, it, it empowers you yeah. to go ahead and, and ask in a way that lets God know just how much you're believing the breakthrough belongs to him and him alone. God, I can't do this by myself. God, I have no more strength left in my body. God, I've become weary and I'm dreaded to faint. But God, I'm giving this prayer one more time. I'm calling on you, Lord, to step in and make my sin. The Bible said, and God appeared once more again. I like that right there. How many of you just want God to show up one more time? Y'all don't want to have no church. I, I need somebody here that, that'll get loud for God and say, God, I just need you to show up one more time. Somebody say, one more time, God. One, one more time in my health. One more time in my life. One more time in my finances. One more time in my relationship. One more time with my child. Lord, give me one more time, the Bible says. And, and then God appeared to him one more time. And he blessed you. Lord Chris, I believe that we would be blessed more if we weren't ashamed to say we were actually in need of a blessing. Some of y'all walk around here all cute and all comfortable, all sophisticated. You might need to amen, shout the weave out today and say, you know what? I need God. I believe in God to bring you to. I need God to show up. I, I don't know about you, but like David, sometimes my praise and my petition are to get God's attention. And I need God to bless me one more. Bless me one more time. You have it in you. Bless me one more, Jacob. Abel was blessed in the Bible said, and God said to him, I'm going to bless you with a change. The, 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 this week, this week, this week, Lady Tremaine, my, my, my prayers were, 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 I guess maybe, I won't say they were shallow, but I won't say they were, were deep. I just say they were necessary. They, were, they weren't necessarily sophisticated. There wasn't much thought uh, other than the spiritual things that came to me. But God said to me this week, he said, the problem with our, our present day Christianity is uh, we've changed the name, but not the nature. Oh, God, you're going to help me with this in here. And so, so everybody now calls themselves Christian. But their character is that of Satan. Y'all ain't going to help me here. They, 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 they call themselves Christian. But when you look at their character, it doesn't line up with the characteristics of Christ Jesus. And so God said to Jacob, I'm going to change your name. Because right now your name means heel catcher. Your, right now your name means supplanter. And so what you've been all the time is, is a shyster. Y'all are going to talk to me here. You, you've been, amen, a deal maker. 
you've been a, a trick and treat kind of, of Christian. You've been following me, but, but every now and then you rely on your fleshly devices in order to get your deliverance. Am I preaching to anybody here? Is there anybody other than me that every now and then you resort to your fleshly devices in order to try to work things out that God is taking too long to work on? I'm going to preach all of this. Sometimes you need God to move immediately and then God delays because you know he does it his way. And while he's delaying, you say to yourself, well, self, if I'm going to get this done, let, let me use the tricks I have in my bag. Is there anybody here other than me that has a bag of tricks? I can trick some people. I can treat some people. I, I just whatever's needed. I can go to my flesh and I can use my flesh to try to get the best for myself. I'm preaching and ain't nobody saying amen. Uh, I feel judgment in the building. But God said uh, the problem with many of us is, uh, is that we are Christian in name but not in nature. Because when you got the nature of Christ, you'll say, he may not come who you want him to come, but he's going to show up just in time. He may not do it the way you want him to do it, but God, when he doesn't take nobody undo it, somebody shout glory. Your name has been Jacob. You have been every ounce of Jacob your whole journey. You've been a trickster, you've been a liar, you've been a deceiver, you've been a shyster, you've been basically a con man in Christ. Oh, y'all gonna make me preach this whole thing. What you've been is what I haven't needed you to be, but what I need you to be is sold out for me. And so your name is Jacob, but you're no longer gonna be called Jacob. You're no longer gonna be the con man you used to be. You're no longer gonna be the shyster you used to be. No, it's time for you uh, to stand on business. I feel like preaching in here. It's now time for you uh, to put up uh, or shut up. Uh, I'll touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you're going to be a Christian, be a Christian uh, by nature and not by name. Uh, somebody shall glory. Uh, I'm not praising God because I'm called Christian. Uh, I'm praising God uh, because praise is what I do uh, when I want to get next to you. Uh, somebody shout glory. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost surging in my soul. Your name is Jacob. Oh, God help me in here, but you're no longer going to be called uh, what everybody calls you. Oh, God, they, they used to call you drunk, uh, not no more. They used to call you alcoholic. Uh, amen. They used to call you womanizer. They used to call you whole. Y'all a prostitute, but not no more. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's your past. Uh, this is your present, uh, and there's favor in your future. Who am I preaching to? Uh, uh, my past is behind me, uh, so I'm forgetting those things which are behind me, uh, and I'm praying Toward, uh, the mark of the heart calling in God, uh, which is Christ Jesus. He said, but your name, your name will be called Israel. Your name will be called Israel. I will make of thee a great nation. Uh, Y'all ain't going to have no church with me. So God said to him, I, I am God Almighty. I am God Almighty. I am El Shaddai. I am the God that is more than enough. Uh, he says, I am God Almighty. Be first. For, for fertile and increase in number. I said the way it says it in the King James, be fruitful uh, and multiply. Uh, I got, they got to having a pitting party in here because life ain't going so well for you. Uh, look at you sitting there sad, uh, sitting there sorrowful, wondering when is success going to show up? Uh, and my God sent me by here to tell you it ain't something that's coming looking for you. Uh, it's something you're going to have to go look for. Uh, for they that come to me must believe that I am a rewarder of them that that diligently seek me. Uh, and I dare you right now to get in a posture of seeking God. Uh, get back in your prayer closet. Get back in your prayer room uh, and call on the name of God. Uh, I serve a God that still can heal. Uh, I serve a God that's will is to make and perform the best things uh, for us. Uh, no good thing will he withhold from them that love him uh, and walk upright. He says, he says, Mama Bird, he says, a nation and a community of nations will come from you. Kings will come out from you. Y'all miss the whole shout. 
God says, I'm going to bless you so well uh, that your blessing will not be contained within the confines of just one nation. I'm going to bless you so well that your community as a whole and as you know it are going to be blessed because you're in it. Somebody say amen. There are companies that are still in existence, not because the company does everything right, but because your light is in the company and God refuses to take his favor off of it. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, you ought to walk on the plane. You ought to walk on the train. Get in the car with this assurance. As long as I'm on board, uh, everything is going to go well. Uh, and even if it falls out the sky or derails, uh, God is going to keep us because I'm on it. Y'all uh, ain't saying amen. Isn't that what Paul said uh, when he was on the ship that was tossed and turned uh, and broken in pieces? I heard the Lord say, uh, just grab a broken piece and float back to shore uh, because as long as I'm I'm with you. You can be sure you're going to hit the seashore because I'm with you. Why aren't y'all shouting? God says, uh, be fruitful, uh -huh. multiply, and be a great nation and community. Amen. To talk about community, my brothers and my sisters, it's important that we recognize and realize that community goes beyond your physical residence and address. Your community has to expand beyond the want of just your own will and move into the confines of helping to make everybody's life better in your life. That God has put you in a circle not for you to isolate yourself from everyone else, but to work in conjunction with everyone else so the function of the community is more favorable. Somebody say amen. I was telling a young person on yesterday who said uh, he's struggling in 8th grade algebra that it's necessary for him to be part of this caring community that we might help him in the area of math that he might not just be left behind but that he might gain and strive and do wonderful things. Somebody say amen. What is the struggle in our communities? My blessing brothers and sisters who have been sun-kissed from Africa's continent is this uh, is that we have forgotten how to look out for one another somebody say amen and so as long as I'm a king and you're a king uh, amen that's enough but now there's some other princes and princesses uh, that we ought to be developing and maturing that they too one day uh, might become queens and kings themselves uh, and if you're a queen and I'm a queen and you're a king and I'm a king and we're all royalty for the Bible declares the these words, we are a peculiar people. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. Great hymn of the church and I invite you to join me and him every Sunday morning. Amen. At the American Legion Hall in Owens Mills for our Owens Mills service. It's 10 a.m. The address is 4424 Painters Mill Road and you're going to have a Holy Ghost good time. Join us in the city if you are in White Marsh or Parkville or Nottingham or anywhere on the east side. Join us at our Omega City Outreach Center, 5503 Richard Avenue, Baltimore 21214 at 12.30 p.m. And there we're going to lift up, amen, shout, and give God all the glory for the great things he's done. There's two times on Sunday. Come visit with me in person. Enjoy the Grace and Glory broadcast. Enjoy us on Facebook. But whatever you do, come be in the service. Get warm by the fire and watch God take you higher. Pastor Jason Clark thanking you for all you do and continue to do for the kingdom. God bless you. Welcome back. Hope you've enjoyed the program. I've enjoyed getting a chance to reconnect with my sister. Normally, uh, we see each other on the platform for the seven last right. words. And here it is, Resurrection Sunday. And I think arguably you can't celebrate a resurrection without first celebrating a crucifixion. Yes, sir. And there was a mother at the center of that crucifixion yes. who suffered a loss. Mary. Yes, yes indeed. indeed. And so we're mindful of even with what you're talking about yeah. that this takes us all the way back to the very Epcot of our faith. Absolutely, and I wish I didn't know how she felt, but now that I do, I have to go forth and help other mothers. So again, tell everybody how they can get that information to be a part. www.lisawea.com. They can register, they can read all about the exciting things that we'll be doing during the Veloma Gathering, April 26th, 27th, 28th. All right, now I've got about 20 seconds and you're a preacher's preacher, so I know in 20 seconds you can give us a reflective thought. Reflective thought. Jesus got up on this Easter Sunday, and because he got up, 
we have no reason to stay down. We have to get up and rise and walk in our power and strength. That's a good word. Appreciate you much. Thank much you love so for much. You. And we've enjoyed having you with us on this Resurrection Sunday. Now get up and get moving, okay? For well, this is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad. We'll see you next week. Until then, thank you for spending this time with us. Continue to walk in His grace and live in His glory right here on Grace and Glory.